In this video, I wanted to talk about if it's necessary to know how to draw or do illustration or concept art if you want to become a good sculptor. So let's talk about that. For anybody that doesn't know me, I've been illustrating probably for over 25 years. I first started doing digital sculpting when I was working with Hasbro and I was working on G.I. Joe characters. And I found that I had to illustrate an awful lot of box art. These guys had gear on and you know they had weapons and all this stuff. I had to do quite a bit of it in a short amount of time. They would give me an entire delivery of people to do. So I might have to do six guys in a month. I don't normally work that fast. What I ended up doing was taking reference photos, kind of the old school way that I used to and finding whatever reference I could of like tactical gear and stuff like that. And then I would Frankenstein together the image, use it as reference, and then I would start to paint it. What I found was when it came to things like some of these, you know, helmets that the Cobra guys would be wearing and, and you know, just stuff that wasn't stock, you know, military gear, I was having a hard time figuring out how the light kind of falls around some of the angles of it. And so it took me longer, right? So I was looking for a way to speed up my workflow. And I thought, why don't I, you know, turn to uh turn to 3d so at the time i couldn't sculpt i didn't know any z brush or anything like that but i did um use a program called daz 3d and poser remember those yeah that's a long time ago 20 years ago or more yeah yeah it's been a minute so like that's how i learned right i would take those those figures that were kind of with the application and and figure out clothing that was as close as i could get it and then just do a render, you know, a lighting pass and render it. And then I would use that to draw on my gear and then paint it. Fast forward, I don't know, maybe like five years. And I was working on the DC Infinite Earths pack, which was the B-list celebrities, superheroes and villains, right? You know, Elastic Man and all those guys. And so by that time I was like, I really need to start learning ZBrush. So I forced myself to use it. And that really helped because I could, they weren't great sculpts, but I could kind of get what I needed and uh, use that to, uh, to help with reference material. I remember myself, I was drawing when I was younger, since I was eight, nine, until I was like 15. And then I found 3 dc the Max and I actually started using Max. And that's how I started. And then ZBrush came and I started using ZBrush. I basically learned all the principles of art inside ZBrush. But what I noticed is having some basic knowledge about drawing you know anatomy perspective primitive shapes and stuff like that actually helps massively even if you know if you're not a master of it i have a student actually now he is um he is good at drawing um, and painting with you know oil painting and things like that and his first character is actually doing an amazing job making a summary in one of my classes so yeah that makes sense if you know drawing it's gonna affect your skill in 3d massively it's true I mean, I, I kind of had the fundamentals in place before I started, so I feel like that helped. And I mean, you look at the old, you know, the old masters, and they all were incredible at drawing anatomy, and then they would go and paint anatomy or sculpt anatomy, and they, you know, it translates. So I think that that helped me pick it up faster in ZBrush. And then it's 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 nice because my anatomy has gotten better in ZBrush. So now when I'm painting and drawing, you know, I can see it in my head, and I'm better with that as well, you know? So kind of one thing is in service of the other. Perspective in, in concept and illustration is different than perspective in 3D. One of the things I noticed is yeah. when I work with concept artists to make characters for games, sometimes we'll have to mm -hmm. adjust things in 3D because they come up with their own way of perspective and things like that. But 3D is a more right. accurate, it's more accurate perspective wise. When I get a concept, usually I, I have to change it in 3D or I have to do some adjustments on the design to make it more practical and uh, make it work, you know? As a professional 2D artist, illustrator, when you jumped into 3D, what was the biggest difference you, you felt? Totally, so for me, and I'm the first one to tell people, I'm not a 3D artist, right? Like I use ZBrush. I know just enough Maya to get me in trouble. If I'm in ZBrush, I feel like the reason that I kind of took to that so well. I'm working on a Cintiq. It feels like I'm drawing. So when I'm in ZBrush and I'm working, I usually have perspective turned off. If I do turn it on, I have it set to like 85. For most of the time, unless I'm working on a likeness or something as far as a portrait goes, I'll have perspective turned off as I'm sculpting. Do you feel like you could easily adopt to 3D as a 
to the artist. I know people who have, like they have kind of, I have friends who are also illustrators and uh, and they run into the same issues that I do, you know? So I tell them to get a, a, a trial of ZBrush or, you know, use Blender or whatever and, um, and play around with it. And they find that the workflow, you know, it, it, it works out pretty well. Um, I tell my students as well. I ended up developing a course for um, for CG Spectrum that uses ZBrush. You know, the students are doing paint overs of the characters that they're sculpting in ZBrush. You know, I know in the game industry, for example, a lot of concept artists are using different 3D applications to make the base uh, geometry or sculpt and then their zbrush sculpt is pretty good like you don't have to start from scratch i'll get my sculpt looking pretty good before i use that for like a paint over these days so i think i was working on a project for uh for a marvel thing and i had to work on superheroes i was able to sculpt it pretty quickly in zbrush get the, the you know the uniform figured out one thing that helped me immensely was watching um rafael grissetti's workflow you look at his final piece and it's like, oh my God, it's amazing. But then when you watch him making it, you're like, what? I'm thinking that his, his, you know, topology is pristine and it's this and that. No, he's like banging in details. He just does exactly enough to get his point across. And then he goes in and he paints over it. And when he's done, it's like a work of art. I always tell my students, you got to find the easiest, fastest way to, to something. You shouldn't complicate your work or whatever and i think that comes with practice and experience you eventually figure out a way to just deliver the point as fast as possible without wasting time sometimes i teach how to sculpt a human head from the basic forms uh, primitive shapes and uh, one of the things i actually noticed is every time i start from scratch likeness takes me like 3,000 brush strokes my brain is so used to sculpting and the more i sculpt the number goes down over time so i have a question for you you count your strokes no, it's, Are you it's, kidding it's me? <laughs> no, I don't count it. ZBrush has it. So if you look at I was the, like, oh my gosh, what, <laughs> what kind of like ADHD do you have? Like some kind of crazy Tourette's, uh, not Tourette's, but you know, but like what? <laughs> no, you can One, see it in ZBrush. Two, <laughs> Oh, wow. Yeah. I didn't even know it did that. That's awesome. So, okay. so there's a bar on the top that you can go back. If you uh -huh. save, save your file, instead of saving your Z tool, you can even keep your you undo. You know what? Yeah. I never even thought to think that those are the strokes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, well, it's right. like, it's I've been basically using everything. For like six years now, seven years. I'm... Yeah, it's basically everything. It's not just the strokes. It's, it's you know, move, sure, sure, it's sure. Pla placing stuff, merging. Yeah, yeah. Basically, all the undos. Okay. But it's mostly in ZBrush, you, you're brushing, right? Or using different yeah. brushes. I think if you're good at oil painting or illustration, when you start doing 3D, I noticed it's easier for people with a background in those to actually become a better 3D artist. I remember when I first started learning ZBrush, like I, I used to hang out with people who were good at it already. And they would, you know, I'd ask them questions, pick their brain about it, and they would tell me, you know, what to do. They would see me laboring over a piece and doing like all of this extra stuff. And, and they're like, you know, do speed sculpts. I was like, well, I don't, you know, I'm not good at that. I'm not very fast. I found now that I, you know, since I started doing the uh, the streaming for Pixelogic and started doing Stylus League, I can get something done that's way better than I expected pretty quickly now. And I think being in front of the camera helps with that. You know what I mean? Because you're like on the spot. I agree, like presentation, teaching. I always tell my students that the difference between an artist and an average person is average person is good at scanning stuff. Humans are made to scan from distance. If you see a lion, you can scan the silhouette quickly like like that. And then you say, okay, that's a lion. And I noticed um, that's the difference between artists and an average person. And the more you actually get used to like involving your brain in different activities, different things, and training your brain to actually see better, notice the details, you actually become better as an artist too. Being put on the spot too helps. You know what I mean? It's kind of like working out at home as opposed to working out in a gym. You know what I mean? Like I can grab my dumbbells and lift them twice and like, oh, okay, that's good. But if you're in a gym and you do that, you look silly. So you have to actually work out. Being on camera with, you know, a bunch of people watching you, you're either going to, uh, you know, rise to the occasion or you're going to look silly. From my experience, from what I have seen from other people, I think knowing how to draw is actually very helpful. I'm not good at it, but I try to train that skill set inside ZBrush. I don't rush my sculpting. I just, I go slow and I notice like going as slow and observing is the best way to become a good artist. You can do it in 2D and then transfer it into 3D. I mean, a lot of the same principles apply to both. You know, you're, you're, you're dealing with uh, primitives and, and forms and silhouettes and all those things and contours. So like 
all of that can apply to both 2D and 3D and finding those shapes. So yeah, it helps. Awesome, man. Thank you for joining. All right, I'm going to say yeah, bye to man. everybody for this video. <laughs> see you guys. All right. See you.